Hi, I'm Brian of Saturn Games, and I make games the lazy way. Today, I'm going to show you how to make bullet hell patterns. Like the name suggests, bullet hells are a genre of video game where you dodge a lot of bullets. Some are simple, some are quirky, and some are... really hard. So in this video, I'm going to show you an easy way to make basic bullet hell patterns with parameters that can be adjusted outside of the code. Now for my game, I'm making a 2D platformer, but you can use this approach to make bullet hell patterns for top-down shooters or any type of 2D game. Before we move forward, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Every little bit helps. Regardless, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy. So when creating a bullet hell pattern, you really only have two components, the bullet and the spawner. I actually already have both made, so this video will be more of a showcase of my solution rather than a step-by-step -step guide. But don't worry, you'll find that my solution isn't hard to understand at all. It doesn't even use rigid bodies, so you don't have to worry about velocities and stuff like that. So let's look at our bullet prefab that I made. By the way, it's very important that you make a prefab yourself for your bullets. In fact, most game objects in your game should be prefabs, especially if you plan on spawning them from a spawner. But if you plan to use my code, make sure that you make the bullets prefabs. So why don't we play our scene right now and see our bullet in action. Uh, there it is. Slow and steady wins the race. And it's gone. Okay, so as you saw, all I really made was just an object that flies slowly to the right. And really, if you think about it, that's all a bullet is. Don't get me wrong, advanced bullet hell patterns may take a more creative approach with their bullets, but if you look at 90% of patterns, they're just shooting bullets in a straight line with some slope. And that's exactly what I made here. As you can see in our bullet script, our bullet has a given speed and rotation. We can also control how long the bullet lives, since we don't want our bullets being spawned forever and lagging our game out. As you've heard me say earlier, we also have to consider our bullet spawners, and they're what make bullet hell so intense. I actually have three created right here, that I'm going to enable right now, and as you can see if I play this scene once more, we have a much more intense bullet hell pattern. Using these spawners and rotating them slightly, you can create many unique bullet hell patterns. By also adjusting the bullet spawner parameters, you can create even more unique patterns. The bullet spawner really adjusts only two things, the bullet it's given and the spawner itself. In the bullet attributes, you can see that we give the spawner a bullet and that we can adjust its life and speed from here. And the spawner attributes, we adjust the spawner itself, setting a different type, and we'll learn more about these later, and the firing rate, which as you can guess, controls how often it spawns bullets. With that, why don't we move on to the script and see how my code actually works. So here's my code for the bullet. As you can see, I've created five parameters. The first three parameters adjust the life, rotation, and speed of the bullet, like we discussed earlier. Spawn point saves the X and Y coordinates where the bullet first spawned, and timer is just a timer that counts up from when the bullet is spawned. In our start function, we get where the bullet spawned and save that to our spawn point variable. Then in our update function, we first check if our timer has exceeded the bullet life, and if it has, then we destroy the game object. Otherwise, we'll keep counting with our timer and change the position of our bullet. As you can see, we have this movement function right here, and it takes our timer as a parameter. All it does is change the X and Y to the next calculated position. Here we use our speed to define how fast the bullet should go. We also use transform.right, which tells us how far in the X and Y direction we should go. We'll return a vector 2 that then takes this calculation and adds it to our spawn point. So the calculation is consistent to where the bullet is spawned and not the origin of the scene. We also have our bullet spawner script. As you can see, we have our bullet attributes and spawner attributes that we talked about before. We also have a variable that's going to hold our newly spawned bullets so that we can adjust them, and a timer that acts like the other timer. We also define an enum spawner type. Think of them as classifiers. Here I use them to define different bullet hell patterns, like straight and spin. We'll go into more detail on that in a bit. So since we have nothing in our start function, all our code's in our update function. First, we increase our timer. Then, we check if our spawner type is equal to spin. For spin, I simply change the Euler angle so it spins on the Z-axis. 
Finally, I check if our timer is greater than our firing rate, and if it is, I call the fire function and set the timer to zero, so we can repeat this process again. Lastly, in our fire function, we check if bullet exists. If it does, we spawn it and save it to our spawned bullet variable. Using that variable, we can change the speed and bullet life to what we set it as in our bullet attributes. We also change the rotation to be the same rotation as the bullet spawner. That way, the bullet will fly straight in the direction we point the spawner. That's the whole script, but before we leave, let's go back into Unity one more time. Now that we're back in Unity, why don't we change all our spawner types to spin? I never showed you what that looked like after all, so I'm gonna play the scene and see what that looks like. That's definitely a much more intimidating pattern. But that's it from me. Every script you saw in this video will be in the description if you want to try it out yourself. All I ask is that if you do, or if you found this video helpful, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll know if you don't. Also, if you want me to show you more advanced patterns, let me know in the comments below. If I see enough people asking, I might make a sequel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you around.